This past summer that we had a stage race where there were basically a climb trial race. It was a, a time trial that kind of went out and back with a slight grade up and down and then a significant climb. Um, started up fairly high at 2,500 meters. It climbed 330 meters. If we look at the power output, this is on a road bike with clip-on TT bars. Second day was a straight up TT, fairly flat, down a little bit lower, 1,500 meter starting elevation. Power production compared to a much higher elevation, significantly lower in a very aerodynamic TT position. And then a road race on the last day, the first hour of which just going up a long climb. And again, power output kind of similar, but physiologically a whole lot less strain. That was not nearly a maximal effort in the road race and the road position. The thing that was interesting here was that power production in the TT was significantly lower, especially than the, the elevation climb trial. It's like, well, what's going on there? Well, started to look then at the different patterns here, looking at dead spot scores. Okay, we see that left greater than right. The thing that really jumped out, average pelvic tilt. 50 degrees on the climb trial on average, 36.1 and 54.6. That's the big outlier. So assessed the effect of going from a 170 to 5 crank on the TT bike down to a 170 and bringing up the front end by one centimeter. And then doing some trials out in the field, on the road, riding that TT bike in that adaptive position. And we look at the uh, pelvic tilt up to 41.4 and 40.5, so about a four to five degree increase in pelvic tilt. Power production just for a couple of these efforts up to 288 and 296, where in the TT race, the maximum, the, the power sustained was 247. I was giving up way too much power being on too long of a crank and having too much of a drop. 